Hey YouTube, it's Valerie here from you to do you Were you able to check out my earlier video? I did a review of Steven Guise's Elastic Habits, kind of walk through the uh, scheme or structure that he has, and then pointed out say, be, maybe some critiques or issues that I might have with it. But in general, my review was pretty positive, and because of that, I wanted to give it a full test drive. You know me, I love to experiment and play with productivity tools. So here's the footage from my experimentation, and um, yeah, enjoy. In his book, Guys noted that actually four months into his run, he actually felt better. Like he was getting more and more momentum as he went along. And if you think back to any kind of habits that you've tried to do, you do have this honeymoon phase and then you know, it tends to fade and you lose momentum. So he's kind of saying like, hey, this actually gets better over time. And he thinks that's kind of the unique feature of his system. And I, I took a little quote here, I'm gonna read it. It says, because it's dynamic and variable, my motivation doesn't die after two weeks as it has my whole life. My motivation still ebbs and flows with normal life circumstances, of course, but it does so at consistently higher level now. Do you guys hear my guinea figs in the background? <laughs> <laughs> they think it's dinner time. It's not quite dinner time. Over this time period, um, these just these four days, you know, my sleep has been good, my health has been good, my energy's been good, my general mood has been good. Getting super motivated hasn't been too difficult. And you know, I'm not looking forward to the days when any of those things are not true, but I'll be curious to see if uh, the Elastic Habit System carries me through those kind of low energy, low health, low sleep, low emotional states and you know see if it works so i'll uh end here for those four days and i'll report back um in a few more bye <sighs> okay so i'm a little more than a week into the elastic habits experiment here and i got sick for a few days caught a cold bummer while nobody wants to be sick it was kind of a, an odd little gift because I got to see, okay, I am definitely having low energy days. I am sick. Um, here's an opportunity to test the elastic habit system. Um, if I'm not able to, you know, really execute, can I still feel like I'm participating in my elastic habits, you know, scheme? Surprisingly, or maybe not, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, if you make uh, like a music analogy, you know, you could say it felt like I had lost the melody, but that the bass line was still going. In my case, the bass line consisted of me uh, consistently doing the dishes, which was like the mini habit of one of my three habit choices. And honestly, that was all I could do. But it was just enough for me to feel like I was trucking along. I do think the elastic habit system uh, did work. You know, it was kind of pressure tested and it worked. I will say that I also feel like I'm bringing something to the party here. Over the years, I have uh, been able to learn how to talk to myself in times like this. So in my early days, I would maybe throw in the towel. I would say, you know, you lost it, you know, you failed in some way and shame on you, or you, you're a bummer, or you're not good at this, or blah, 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 blah. Kind of negative talk would actually exacerbate the problem. It would make me feel less motivated, less enthused. It wouldn't make the, the habit party very fun. So I have uh, learned how to be more kind to myself and just say, uh, you know, stuff like this happens. We get sick and we're not able to always consistently do what we hope we can do. So, you know, it's fine. And I kind of just let it roll off my back. So I think that guys doesn't explicitly say stuff like that in the book. He doesn't tell you to bring kindness to the party. He doesn't tell you how to talk to yourself. But I do think those two things go hand in hand. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are people who start executing the elastic habit system, they might find themselves uh, talking more positively to themselves or maybe having fewer opportunities to talk negatively to themselves. Um, it seems to be kind of inherent in the system. So we'll see. I'll keep uh, checking in with you a few more times. Um, let's hope my energy kind of stays back up, but you know, we'll see what happens. 
Okay, so it's day 10 of my Elastic Habits experiment here, and I would say things are going pretty well. I made one minor tweak. You may remember I established three habits, and one of them is working on this channel. And for that, I used um, the alternate form of um, setting up the options. The original form is this nine option grid where you have three choices and then three levels within those choices. But for working on this channel, I opted for a pool of choices. Turns out I don't really need that pool. All I need is I'm gonna work on this channel for a small amount of time, a medium amount of time, or a long amount of time. And um, I actually pull what I'm gonna work on from my to-do list uh, that I keep for this channel. So uh, the pool isn't really necessary. Um, I'm glad I did it. I just kind of borrowed that approach to give myself flexibility, but I don't really need that approach anymore. I can just use that list. As I've been going through this uh, process of tracking habits, I've been reminded of that phrase, what gets measured gets managed. You sort of want to watch out for what you measure because that's what you're going to manage. Here we are, you know, um, 10 days into this uh, program, have I um, found myself with any unintended consequences? And, you know, here on day 10, you know, so far so good. It doesn't seem like I've kind of uh, twisted anything or got anything weird here. Um, I, it seems like uh, what I set out to do is what I'm doing. It feels, you know, really good to have the dishes done, to be taking walks every day and to be working on this channel. So, you know, that's what I wanted to do and that's what I'm doing. But I do think it's worth asking this question, you know, giving yourself a moment to reflect. Uh, did I uh, set these up correctly in a way that actually gets me where I want to go? I don't think that um, the author, Stephen Guise here, has encouraged people to really reconsider or reflect or rejigger their uh, options and the way they've set things up, but heck, I'll give you permission to do it. I think it would be totally fine for you to say, hey, I set up these goals and I set up this way of measuring and um, it's not working for me. Um, it's getting an unintended outcome. Um, I'm, you know, talking to myself poorly about it or I'm um, not spending the, the time in the way that I want to spend my time or something like that. So um, I do think though, what gets measured, gets managed phrase can, you know, bring to bear, you know, some self-reflection here. Okay, day 25 here. Uh, this is, um, <laughs> you know, where things really get tested. I, you know, kind of got off my game for a while there, um, for about uh, not quite a full week. First, there was a holiday and, you know, that interrupted the flow of things, which, you know, I don't begrudge. Holidays are meant to do that. Uh, they're meant to refresh and restart and throw things, make things different. Um, but, you know, they can be disruptive and throw you off your usual routine. So that just, you know, happened by its very nature. And then I had a couple days where I just, you know, was feeling low. I, um, you know, was a little bit sad and, um, you know, not loving life as much as I do normally. And you know, that's okay, that happens. But uh, when it does, it's hard to execute on all the habits. And so some of them had zero, but they were mostly, I just did the bare minimum. And so the elastic habits kind of worked like it was supposed to. The tricky thing was that when I was feeling low, it wasn't just hard to do the habits, but it was also hard to track them. I found that I wasn't really um, motivated or enthused um, to, to sit down and do the tracking, or even just that it wasn't, you know, forefront in my mind. We talk about upward spirals and downward spirals, and that I think part of a, a low day is not only that you don't do the thing, but you also don't track the thing. And in the Elastic Habits, I think the tracking for uh, Stephen Guy's tracking is kind of the key because that's what, um, you know, seeing those, those little ticks on those successful days, even if it's the bare minimum, does add up. So uh, what happened was I, there were a couple days where I did stuff, but I didn't have the uh, focus to track it. And so then I had to recreate it a couple days later and I wasn't quite sure what happened. And so then there's a, a few, couple days, few days in there where um, I'm not quite sure of my stats. So, you know, that's okay. Because of that, I wondered if there were other ways to do the tracking. Um, I know that the author, Stephen Guys, he does his tracking at the end of the day. And I think maybe he even keeps it by his bedside. 
so that um, it's right there in front of him. He has it handy. He's always going to go to bed, so he's always going to see it. And also that it gives him an opportunity to slip in a mini win um, if he hasn't done it. So as he's sitting there marking things, he can say, oh, yeah, I didn't do my, you know, two jumping jacks. And so I'm going to do those two jumping jacks right now before I go to bed and then I'll get that win. Something to play around with um, that can maybe help me through these these low times. Okay, Elastic Habits check-in time. The way he has you do it is um, in sort of 15 day sprints or, you know, blocks. And his uh, thinking is 30 days is a common amount of time in a month. And on days that have 31, then you can either bank those for February when you need to borrow them, which seems maybe a little overly complicated, or you can use it as like a bonus day or an extra day or a rest day. But what I've done, because I didn't actually start at the beginning beginning of the month, which I'm sure most people don't, I'm a, it would be kind of a just a lucky coincidence if you read the book at the right time to start at the very beginning of the month. So what I did is I just set up two 15 day blocks and then I'm just going to do another 15 day block and another 15 day block. The milestone here is that I finished two 15 day blocks and I printed out a new schedule for myself to do another set of uh, two sets of 15 day blocks. So I got to reflecting and I thought about the three habits that I set out to do, cleaning the kitchen every morning, doing a daily walk and then working on this channel. And even, oh, it's just, it's been amazing. Over those two 15 day blocks, I have turned working on this channel into part of my regular work day. So uh, coincidentally, I got a prescription for some physical therapy exercises and I am gonna struggle to turn those into a habit. So I am um, taking out the uh, working on this channel and I'm gonna have faith that I will do that as just part of my regular uh, daily work schedule, my weekly work schedule. And I'm gonna substitute in the physical therapy exercises because I know in the past when I have done those, I have really struggled to do them and do them consistently. So I'm hoping that the Elastic Habits tracker system will help me with that. Okay, so I thought I'd pop in here to just share a little bit about why I'm telling you all the detail, all the blow by blow of all of my habits and how they're going and the ups and downs and the why I'm swapping out one habit for another. And that is this. The book does not give you permission to swap out one habit for another. He doesn't really contemplate the idea that you might need to change things up. The author seems to have chosen his three habits and has done them forever and always. But you can see as an example, in my life circumstance, it didn't make any sense for me to continue one of the habits and I had another one come up that needed a lot of attention. So I hope with my example, I'm giving you permission to make those kinds of customizations. I named this channel You To Do You because I want people to really ride with the concept of you do you. When it comes to productivity, when it comes to any of these self-help books that give you a prescription, you have full permission to read them through, take it on, and then adjust. Because if you don't adjust, it's pretty unlikely that they could give you an exact prescription that works exactly for you. And because you don't adjust, it doesn't jive with you, and then you end up giving it up. And when you give up stuff like that, you can either say to yourself, oh, okay, that wasn't for me, which I hope that you would do. Or sometimes you go, oh, I feel like a failure because I didn't stick with that. Or geez, how come I can never get my act together? Or all that kind of self-talk that doesn't really serve you and is actually really not true. It's not your fault that that book didn't work. That book didn't work because it wasn't customized to you. So what I'm hoping is that you will bring to the party your own awareness and your own self-reflection. And then with those two things, you can customize the advice and make it your own. When you make it your home, <laughs> that was a funny uh, slip there. When you make it your own, it's more at home in your body. When it's at home in your body, you're way more likely to actually be able to continue with whatever the recommended you know, behavior or tool or uh, workflow or time management tool or anything like that. With this little extra comment here, I wanna give you full permission to customize and uh, fix up, change up, do whatever you want to make any of these self-helpy books or any of these books that tell you how to manage your time, manage your tasks, manage your calendar, manage your day, manage your anything, make it your own and you're way more likely to stick with it and feel good about it. Okay, final wrap up here on Elastic Habits. I am about to start my 
sixth 15 day block and things have been going great. Um, it has made me move forward on this channel. I'm walking more consistently, which makes me feel fabulous. I have been keeping the house more clean, more consistently, which makes life nicer. And it actually has helped me when I swapped out the working on the channel for the physical therapy exercises. I have stayed focused on those. I have not done as well as I would like, but I've done better than I have in the past with my physical therapy. And that is a meaningful improvement. The main takeaway for me is that Elastic Habits invites you to have a lot of flexibility so you give yourself a break and you can continue to rack those wins uh, which juices up the motivation and keeps you moving forward. And my add-on is that you customize, customize, customize. Make it work for you. Take some time to reflect on what aspects of the system are working for you and what aren't and change it out and swap it out and make it work for you. For example, Guys has these bonuses in his uh, scoring system. I never once achieved a single bonus. And honestly, I didn't care. I wasn't like gunning for the bonuses. It wasn't, you know, an important part of it to me. So when I build my next, uh, you know, block uh, sheet, I'm gonna leave out the bonuses because who cares? They don't mean anything to me. They might mean something to you. And if they do, keep them in, that's great. So that's my wrap up. I know this was a long one, but I hope you got something out of it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.